Uh, Mwamboi Mwange, I work with the National Museums of Kenya. I'm the curator Nyeri Museum. And it's at this moment, the country, we are mourning the death of one, uh, one Maumau veteran, and not only a veteran, but a field marshal, Mudoni Wakirima, a brave lady who took the initiative by herself to go to the forest to fight for the independence of our country, the freedom that we enjoy today. It's good to note that she is the only woman who rose to the field, to the rank of a field marshal. And this title she was given by the late field marshal, Dedan Kimadi Washiori, while she was still in the forest. This is because of the bravery that she showed uh, in considering that she was the only, she was among the only women that ever went to the forest and having been among the last group to leave the forest. Mudoni was born in 1931, so she has rested at the age of 92 years. She joined the forest at the age of 20 years. And she always said that she stayed in the forest for 22 years. This is because actually they were 11 years, but for her she believed they were 22 years because they would count day and night. She was among the last women, she was among the last group to leave the forest. And the reason as to why is because she felt that despite having gained our independence on 12 December 1963, she believed that she hasn't attained, Kenya has not attained the independence. So on that particular day of the 12th December 1963, she went to Nairobi at Jivanji <coughs> and she was able to meet with the then the first president, the late Mze Jomo Kenyatta and accompanied by other generals from the forest. She was able to meet with Muse, and her curiosity was how have we gained independence yet we are still in the forest and Bado Mubeberu Yuko as they would always refer to him, to the colonial government. It was at that stage Muse Jomo Kenyatta convinced her that they have gained independence and she went back to the forest. Instead of going home, she went back to the forest again. And after four days, that is when she got convinced that she could be able to now uh, tell the other Maumau veterans who are still in the forest that it's true, Kenya has gained independence. She had been given the mandate to by Mze Jomo because as I said, Mudoni, Field Marshal Mudoni was very brave, so courageous. And sometimes people even say Mudoni was born a man. Only the features were for a female because she was more brave than even some of the male people that she, male veterans that were in the forest. Uh, a keynote. She once she was able to kill a, ry a rhino by herself without being assisted by any person in the forest. So when she went back to the forest and convinced the other veterans that it's true they have Kenya has attained her independence, it's on 16th December the same year that they got out of the forest and they were able to walk to the Mau Mau flag site. That is where currently we have the Rorengo Stadium. And that is where they met with Muse. And Modoni walked out of the forest holding the flag of the Republic of Kenya. As she had been given by Muse while they met at Njivanji Gardens. And an axe, Gavanoa. And it's key to note that that axe is the symbol that we normally have at the coat of arms and the coins that we have 
when you look at uh, at the coins that we have from the one shilling up to the 20 shillings yes you can be able to see there is an axe there so that is the gadhanwa that she always treasured and said alitoka nayo kutoka kwa msituni kwa hivyo akitoka msituni alikuwa na vitu mbili alikuwa na the na shoka na alikuwa na bendera ya Kenya so she surrendered her weapons and the other Maumo veterans at Rurengo Stadium on 16th December 1963 to Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. Mudani will be remembered for her bravery while in the forest. Actually, being a woman, it took her initiative to be there and she also was able to convince the husband to join Maumau because first of all, Mudoni joined the Mau Mau rebellion as a spy. And it drew the spying that Dedan Kimathi was able to, um, to note how brave and how willing she was to join the Mau Mau war. Uh, it's at this point she was able to even convince her husband, General Mutongi, so the husband went to the forest before, and then it's later that now Mudoni joined them in the forest. In the forest, they never lived as a couple, but she always told us, Kidakai negotiari mutumia kanamuduri wa mudo. And Mudoni believed that her baby was, and up to now, as she has rested, her baby is Kenya. And that is why she always uh, treasured the flag. The clergy from her church tells us that if there's something Mudoni loved, it was the flag. Because anyone who died close to her, she would always place the flag on the coffin, on the casket. Mudoni being a heroine, Field Masha being a heroine, there is the identity that she had of the hair because while in the forest she never shaved and while in the forest she went the clothes she went with got torn they got worn out so she had to use her means to get uh, clothed so she made a digaya by herself made of animal skin so alitumia miti ambayo ilikuwa inakaa ni kama the size ya kuweza kuweka kuunganisha hiyo nguo hiyo skin ya wa wanyama ili iweze kumtengenezea hiyo nguo and it's true those are the two things that she really valued once you visited her at her house she would always have the chance and you'd always get the opportunity to have a look at the regalia and the most recent one is when she presented it to the president his excellency uh, william samoy ruto and the deputy at sagana state lodge she valued the two that is the hair and that and that ligaria and she wished her wish was that the two be taken to the hero's corner that is the museum for heroes in nairobi so that it can be passed on from one generation to another and people will get to learn more about her and the struggle that she went through in the forest when she shaved her hair she told she said that the reason as to why she shaved the hair was because she was still living, she felt she was still living in the forest with the hair. And now it was time for her to get to the reserve and to be united with the people. It was a remarkable event of her life. And again, she said that she now felt like the rest of the people. Because at night when she would wake up and to, to turn the hair and sleep on it like the pillow, because it was so long after shaving she confirmed that she now was able to feel some fresh air flowing over her head so the two are going to be donated as her wish to the hero's corner in nairobi 
under the National Museums of Kenya. Her other wish was to have a, a public institution named after her, perhaps a road, a, a market, but it's something public for people to see. And I want to commend uh, the Nyeri governor, His Excellency Mutahi Wakahiga, for having fulfilled her wish of seeing something named after her, after having the new and the most and the newest market, if not in Nyeri, in the country named after her. Field Marshal Mudoni Wakerema, main bus terminals in Nyeri. Her final wish was to have a statue, like the one we have for Field Marshal Dedan Kimadi Washiori at, in Nairobi at Kimadi Street. And uh, the one that has also been, that was installed by the county government of Nyeri under the leadership of His Excellency Mwajimu Mutahi Wakahiga under the Department of Tourism and Culture at Kahigaini, where the Dankimadi was shot at the Dankimadi ward. In the Gikuyu Nation, we say Mogumo Nyogwete, and it's in fact a Mogumo has fallen, not only in Nyeri County, not only in the Republic of Kenya, but in the entire world, because we believe and we know that Field Marshal Modoni Wakirema was an international figure admired by many, admired by many, bearing in mind that there are even researchers and researchers and students who would come from all over the country, the world, to come and study more about her and get to know more about her. And as she always told us, to value our culture, to embrace our culture, have peace and love one another. It's my hope that we'll be able to fulfill her desires as she rests in peace. She always gave an example while they were in the forest. They would share the little that they had. And she would always say it in Kikuyu. So let's embrace what our mother, Maito, has left behind. <laughs>